Listen. This man was once a beautiful flower. Oh, be quiet. One must have chaos in oneself to be able to give birth to a dancing star. She is always talking to herself. Doctor, sometimes you would swear that there's actually someone in there with her. Irene. 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 Doctor, does she ever say anything of a value? Irene. 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 So far, it all seems like utter nonsense. But you are the expert, Doctor. If anybody's going to figure her out, it's going to be you. Dr. Pride, in your expert opinion, did she commit the murder that she is charged with? All of the facts point to her guilt. After the brutal murder, Irene seems to have retreated into her own inner world, and so far... There is nothing to indicate that she will return back to reality. Something has shocked her into retreating into her own delusional state. I've read through her history and I'm going to engage the patient in a one-on-one -on -one to make my initial notes on her. Wish me luck, doctor. Might I wish you good luck? You will need it, Dr. Mac. She's a crazy one. Hello, Irene. I am Dr. Mack. I am here to help you. You can trust me. I have been reading that you are an artist. I understand that you write screenplays. I am only interested in beauty. I want to toss aside all of the unnecessary drama and the headlines filled with the overwhelming tragedy of mankind's negative karma. Oh, wretched and ephemeral race, why do you compel me to tell you what it would be most expedient for you not to hear? What is best of all is utterly beyond your reach. Not to be born, not to be, to be nothing. But the second best for you is to die soon. Irene, do you remember that quote from Nietzsche? Doctor, sometimes I hear old voices echoing in my mind. I am not sure if they are memories or artifacts left over from mankind's distant past. Irene, you hear echoes, see ghosts flickering in and out of events from your past, all recreated on the interior walls of your mind's eye. I am an artist. I exist to cover the ugly truth with a blanket of beauty. Boom! It hits me like a sledgehammer. The existence of the gods. Oh, oh, oh. All of their intrigues and fights, this whole frickin' theater of divinity inside my head, inside my mind. It all somehow makes human existence more meaningful. Making life beautiful to compensate for the ugliness of death. Irene, that is a fascinating wager. Quite fascinating, indeed. 
Irene, let me take you back in time. Have you thought about that night in late October? There was a full moon that night, and the shadows were long and gray. My mind is blank. I don't remember a thing. Your husband's bloody and battered body lay on the floor when you looked out your bedroom window and you say you saw a man on a bicycle. Can you describe the man on the bicycle? Was he tall? Was he skinny or fat? There was no man on a bicycle. I don't remember anything about that night. Are you sure? Let me take you back to that moment in time. You have your husband's blood all over your hands, and you look out your bedroom window. What do you see? Nothing. It's all a big dark void. I see nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing. No words. No memories. Nothing. All right, Irene. I will leave you now. Our meeting has been most productive. I feel that we can work together. How do you feel about us working together? Well, Doctor, I don't know what to silver bike. It was a silver bike. It was a silver bike. Oh, yeah. Oh, what did you say? I was just saying that, uh... I, uh, I don't really know what to say. I'm, I'm confused. I, I want to forget all of this. I want, I want, I want to create beauty again, Doctor. I want to break free. I want, I want to escape from my past. Can you, can you really help me to do that, Doctor? Gratitude? I'm not sure, Doctor, but I need to get out of this Please. Let's see what we can do about that, Irene. I will do everything I can for you. Trust me. I need to go now and write my final reports. We will meet again tomorrow and start our plan. Good day to you, Irene. <laughs> well, Dr. Mac, do you think she's innocent of the murder of her husband? Not a chance in hell. She is hiding behind her illness and is as guilty as Satan himself. Doctor? Give her 50 milligrams of Thorzine four times per day and start that dosage as soon as possible. I will be back to see her tomorrow morning. Irene. I'm not upset that you lied to me. I'm upset that from now on, I can't believe you, my love. The drugs, the, the, the drugs are fogging my mind, but I, I can see him now. There, there, he, he clearly is. I see him. The man on the silver bicycle was Dr. Mac. He was my lover, and he killed my husband with his own Callaway one-iron. A golf club was never put to such perfect and beautiful use. Not so loud. They might have cameras watching us. Look out. Call him on the phone and get him to come back while you're still alert. Have you still got Let's see here. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> oh, I will slit his throat. 
beauty will once again flow across the face of the earth. Go, Irene, go, Irene, spreading beauty across the earth. Beauty is killing Dr. Mac, killing Dr. Mac, killing Dr. Mac. That dirty bastard planned this whole thing and wants to keep me in here. Doctor, Doctor, Doctor Mac, why do you compel me to tell you what it would be most expedient for you not to hear? <laughs> What is best of all is utterly beyond your meager reach. Not to be born, not to be, to be nothing. But the second best for you is to die soon. <laughs> it is impossible to suffer in here, in my twisted solitude, without making him pay for it. Every thought. Every passing moment contains my plans for complete revenge. <laughs> <laughs>